Hi, I'm Dave from the College of Science at Purdue, uh, Department of Physics and Astronomy. And uh, my friend uh, and colleague, Bill, is here somewhere. Uh, say hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Wow. He's really in there. Uh, okay, we're gonna talk about the concept of photospectrophotometry, which uh, is measured by a, uh, it's a procedure in which we measure the amount of light absorbed by a material by a device called a photospectrophotometer. So let's take that word apart for a minute. Um, photospectrophotometry. Photo, referring to what comes to mind? Light. Light, okay. Photo, spectro, what do you think of when you think of spectro? A lot of different things in a big, long continuum. Okay. In this case, uh, the that continuum is electromagnetic radiation. Uh, specifically for our purposes, the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. A lot of big words here. Photo, spectro, photometry, photometry, metry, metric means to measure. So measuring the wavelength of light, and in this case, visible light. So um, Bill, I've, I've got something I wanna show here, if you can come a little closer. Um, we have, uh, if you have white light, for example, the light coming from, um, from a flashlight. And you know what, Bill, should we dim the lights? Yeah, because I really can't see much. Okay, let's dim the lights. So I have white light, and if I want to look at the colors that make up white light, uh, Bill, how would you usually do that? I have no idea. Uh, what about, have you seen the Dark Side of the Moon album, Bill, Pink Floyd? Oh, the, the little thing that diffracts everything. The prism. Prism, that's it. Yeah. So. We have a device here, you're very good, Bill. We have a, a device here called a diffraction grating, and it works just like a prism. Let me show you. Using uh, finely grooved lines. So there's a, a small detail. This is a piece of plastic that has lines, a thousand lines per millimeter etched into it. And it has it does the same function as a prism. It, uh, disperses the wavelengths of light into uh, their separate colors or separate frequencies. I notice that the, there's an order there of the colors. Uh, yeah, there is, and it's the same on both sides. We get the same effect on both sides. So uh, let's see, red, uh, orange, yellow, not much yellow, green, blue. Ooh, and then the other side of blue, there's really a dark blue, we could call that Violet. That's Ooh. really hard to remember. How do? Is there a way that you can help me remember this? Well, let's see. Um, red, uh, uh, red, orange, yellow. Roy. Roy. R O Y. R O Y. G. Um, I don't know. Roig. <laughs> well, what about what? Let's see. Roig. B I V. Roy G. Biv. So, like, his first name's Roy. His middle name is G. And his last name is? Biv. Biv? Blue indigo violet. Now, I don't know if we really see indigo violet, but it does make a convenient mnemonic, uh, an easy way to remember the colors. So shall we go with that? I think that's a good one. All right. Let's turn the lights back on. So the photospectrophotometer will measure the amount of light that goes through a, a material a liquid, and we put the liquid in a little vial here. We call it a cuvette. Um, it's optically transparent on two sides, meaning they're very smooth. They don't uh, diffract light. The light will pass right through. Now, if we want to show you an example, to demonstrate how this works, we have, I, I just have a, a laser pointer, okay? And I'm gonna pass the laser pointer through a, through a, uh, a cuvette that has just water in it. Okay, and what would you expect to see when the red beam goes through the water? I think you're gonna get it shooting all over the place. Okay, well, let's see. So we have a narrow beam of red light. We shoot it through the cuvette and 
Can huh. you see that, Bill? Yep, it okay. just went right through. Now, let's go to the outside again. Inside, and I don't see a whole lot of difference. It's still the same brightness. So that tells me that the red light is being transmitted through the water and it is not absorbed. Well, what would happen if it was absor absorbed, Bill? It wouldn't be as bright on the other side. Sure, you're right. Right? You're right. You're right. It would be absorbed, meaning some of the light would be stopped by the solution. Well, just for comparison, let's try that with a green solution. There's my red light. We'll pass it through the green solution. Whoa. And what do you see? Not much. Not much. No green? Green. I'm going to turn the light off, Dave, guys, so we can see maybe that difference there because I can't quite see it when you go. Okay. No green. Green. Wow. So the green solution is, is absorbing a lot of that red light. Why is it absorbing it? Well, Bill, think about the color wheel. What color is opposite red on the color wheel? Ah, uh, green is. Green. And so green is the complementary color of red. And in optics, in spectrophotometry, the complementary color is what's absorbed. So by contrast, what's the complementary color of blue? Uh, yellow. Yellow. So if we were going to analyze a blue solution, we'd want to use yellow light. So that's what you were talking about earlier when we were looking at the one that was dividing all the light. In this machine, it's going to use something like that to divide the light so it's only shooting a certain color through? Yes. So if we have a solution, let's say our green solution. Uh, so a green solution, if we were analyzing something for green, think about uh, a common material in nature. Oh, uh, chlorophyll, right? Sure. Chlorophyll in leaves. So we could extract chlorophyll from leaves, and there are different kinds of chlorophylls. Some are green, some are red, some are yellow. And we can analyze the presence of each one based on the amount of light that it absorbs, the amount of light that it blocks. Because the stronger the solution, the more light it blocks, the stronger the solution, um, the more we know is present. So it would be more concentrated? It would be more concentrated. Good word. So we looked at the green solution previously, and I just want to show everyone where the solution goes in the spectrophotometer. And that would be right here. Uh, the cuvette goes into this uh, little compartment. And so if I were going to put the green solution in, that's where I would put it. And then we have the ability to select wavelengths up and down through the visible spectrum from, uh, oh, about 400, th maybe 390 nanometers up past 700 nanometers. And we're going to show you what that looks like with the light coming through the cuvette. Bill, shall we darken the lights? Oh, I see the blue. Oh, great. Should we change the wavelength? And right now it's at 437. So we're at 437 nanometers. Let's, uh, let's go up a little bit. We're at 450. Is the color changing? Uh, it's still blue, kind of maybe a little lighter, a little, a little less purple and a little more blue. Yeah, it's kind of a light blue now. Okay, um, like maybe uh, more of an aqua color. Yeah. Okay, we're at uh, 500 nanometers now. It's kind of getting a hint of green. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, we're at 535. Definitely greenish. 535 nanometers. 550 nanometers. Ooh, wait a minute. Now it's switching from a green to uh, 
maybe a yellow. Okay, a little yellowy. Uh, we're at 580 nanometers. Now it's starting to get kind of orangish. Okay, we're at 588 nanometers. Almost 600. Kind of going to a dark, oh, dark orange going to a red. Okay, now we're at 610 nanometers. That looks pretty red. Certainly dark orange. Yep. And we're at 690. It's a little fainter, but yeah, it's it is... still, still there, but it's... So why do you think it's fainter? Hmm. I don't know. Well, you know, it could just be that the machine does not produce all wavelengths with the same intensity. That's one explanation. Another explanation might be our own eyes are not as sensitive to all wavelengths uniformly. Is that why they say sometimes girls see more colors than guys? I, you know, I've never heard that. Huh. Because I often hear that from girls saying that they see a lot of colors that we don't see. Hmm. I know girls are oftentimes smarter than guys. Yeah. Okay, we're at 700 nanometers, and that looks pretty red to me. Yep. And it's also fainter. Let's go back down. So we're at 700, and we're going to go back down. I'll read the numbers as they go. 650, 600. 575, I hear the machine switching gears, 550 nanometers, 500 nanometers, 450 nanometers, 440, 435, let's see how far it goes, 428, 420, 410, and that's probably about the limit. And it's 400 very, nanometers. Very, 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 very light. So our range is about 400 to about 700. Okay, so David, I understand now that the light gets, it goes through from the back to the front. They can change the different wavelengths of light that go through the, the uh, sample inside the cuvette. And you showed the concentration of the green, but I still don't understand, you know, how do I how do I get numbers from this machine? I mean, what does it tell me? Does it does it give me something that I can then know how much how concentrated something is? Sure, Bill, that's a good question. Let me first of all just point to the display here. Um, here is a button, a tab that says uh, absorbance and percent transmittance. So ABS is absorbance. Uh, percent T is percent transmittance. Uh, if you want to come around to the side, let me show you an example. So we looked previously with the red laser pointer and, and I see the red light doesn't really change coming through the, the water in the cuvette. So I might say that that is uh, just qualitatively 100% transmitted, meaning no light is being stopped by the solution. So would that be zero absorbance then? then? that would be zero absorbance. Oh, okay. That's correct. No light is absorbed. All the light is transmitted. And then by comparison, when we looked at the green, we saw that a lot of the light was absorbed. So now my transmittance is much, much less. It might be, you know, just, I don't want to put a number to it, but we could estimate it might be 90% uh, absorbed or 95% absorbed and five or 10% transmitted. Okay. Now, you asked the question, Bill, about concentration previously. And so certainly not all solutions of a color have the same amount of color or uh, the material that's absorbing the light, we call it a chromophore, just meaning it's a, it's a material that absorbs color. Let me show you an example. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the green. Oops, I just upset my uh, water vial. 
Now, maybe we can draw a comparison here. And maybe we can and maybe we can't. We'll try. So there is my red laser. I'm going to shine it through the first green solution and then shine it through the second green solution. And do you see a difference? The first one appears to be not as bright. The second one's brighter. Okay, so I have two green solutions. One is transmitting more red. That would be this one. If it's transmitting more red, then it's less concentrated. Less concentrated. This one is transmitting less red. So it's absorbing more, it, meaning that it would be what, Bill? More concentrated. More concentrated. So I can tell how concentrated the solutions are qualitatively just by looking.